Well, so it wasn't that. And I've just stained half the page. Crap. Ink is always a message, never to reveal one. I must find something else. Aha! It's working! The heat reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, it could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition or mother's gonna kill me. Now I better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. And we should probably just go straight to the... That's the door to Elizabeth's room. Monsieur de Richet, I really need to talk to you. Hello. You're Elizabeth Adams, aren't you? Yes. I regret that we haven't been properly introduced. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes. Why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing, so I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. Huh? What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more what? agitated. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait, there must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to Whoa. describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've, I've got to go. Wait, I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what oh, she did. Gosh. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right. I I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already. I I respect your silence. Please excuse me. 
Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Uh... Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. Sure, he tried everything. To keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. Uh-oh. Your mother, for example. You mean the woman who left me in the hands of your mother? The woman whose duty it was Crap. to give up her life to protect me? I disowned my mother when I turned 13. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have mentioned her. I've got nothing more to say to you. Figure it out yeah, yourself. Yeah, I know. Whoops. Naive. What does that mean? Questioning costs one more effort point. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything oh. else that sir would like to know? What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir, but I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's <sighs> guests, sir. Perhaps sir uh, would like to know something else? I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. Hmm. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the vine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. Etiquette school. I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. 
me. <laughs> and you haven't seen Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Soutane, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favourite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I've taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule, but I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry, I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. <laughs> would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. <laughs> the orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. <laughs> My lord, I uh, only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are mm. Monsieur <laughs> Louis Moras de Richet. De Richet? De Richet? A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? My friend. The presence of a particle does not necessarily mean a person belongs to the nobility, nor does it prevent the observance of the rules of etiquette, Monsieur von Vonner. Have you any information on this Napoleon? Mortimer is arranged to keep his family out of the harmful reach of Corsican monarchists. Hmm. Interesting. And that's not all. Mortimer and my mother have apparently agreed to deliver cannons to this Bonaparte. What? Since when does the order finance wars? Are you sure? Unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. And the fact you didn't know my mother made this agreement makes it even stranger. Thank you, Louis. At least you have taught me something. Of course. Monsieur Le Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Uh-oh. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Oh, no. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannons. Agreement to aid 50,000. Absolutely. 50,000 louis d'or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 louis d'or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. So, you're wasting my time. I need uh, to work what? with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped okay, me. Okay, whatever. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard time...